Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We give honor and glory and thanksgiving to the one and only, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. And we greet you for this Wednesday night Bible study, amen, this moment in this time of, amen, fellowship in his holy, righteous, and majestic name. Welcome, 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 welcome to our Ebenezer virtual family. Amen. We thank God for you this evening who thought it not robbery to log in, amen, and to hang out, amen, with this, amen, this preacher here, this minister of men, Marcus Washington. We thank God and we bless you that when you heard Reverend Washington was doing Wednesday night Bible study that you didn't pick up your bag of marbles, amen, and turn on something else. But we are so excited, amen, tonight, amen, and we give thanks unto God for keeping us through another day, amen, amen, from sunup to sundown, amen, he is a keeper. And if you know that to be the case, it'll be all right to give his name all glory, honor, and praise. We want to welcome our visitors Amen. If this is your first, second, third, or fourth time, or 100th time, amen, visiting with us for Wednesday night virtual Bible study, amen, we want to pause for the cause just to welcome you and to say thank you for joining us. We also want to stay connected with you, amen. We would ask, amen, if you would go to the website, ebenezerame.org, forward slash connection dash card, fill out some information so uh, we as a church body of believers and families Amen. We would like to stay in contact with you, and we are prayerful that uh, you would make that decision to come out and visit us, amen, uh, on one Sunday, amen. I'm going to give a shout out because it's women's season, and the sisters, amen, are working so hard, amen, to put together a dynamic, amen, women's conference through none other than the dynamic leadership of our co-pastor, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning. We will see you there, amen. Go online and register for that as well. Amen. We want to thank God for our pastors, the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning, Jr., who's our senior pastor. Again, our co-pastor, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning. Amen. We want to thank all of the staff, officers, multimedia, amen, security, amen, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody for all that they continue to do in providing us with a platform to be able to reach out, reach in, but more importantly, amen, extend the word of God and God's love to you and your family. Amen. Amen. We want to have an opening word of prayer, and then following that, we'll also have an opening selection from our praise ensemble. We thank God for them. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for the praise ensemble. But let us, amen, open with a word of prayer. How many of you still believe that prayer changes things? And before we do anything, we need to pray about and for everything. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall be grateful and rejoice in it. We shall be grateful, God, because you woke us up. God, you allowed us to step into the new dawning of another day. You've kept us through many dangers, toils, and snares, and you've allowed us to arrive back at our respective placings of dwelling, God safe, sound, and secure. And for that, we are grateful. Now, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you would reach out across the virtual highways, the virtual byways. God, yet one more time, that you would extend your presence and your power to these, your people. God, we ask that you would touch them in a mighty and a marvelous way. Begin to open up their hearts, their minds, their consciousness, and even their spirit, God, that you might be able to pour something in them, God, that would change the rest of their lives for the better. God, we know and believe that you are still a healer, a conqueror, and God, we know that without a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are still sovereign, and we believe that there's nothing, God, that you can do anything, God, but fail. So God, bless these, your people. We would be in grace if we didn't call out the names of our pastors Amen, God, in the name of the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning, the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning, wherever they are, God, continue to bless them, continue to use them for your kingdom, honor, and glory. Now, God, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you take this yielded and still broken vessel of a human being called Marcus Washington, we ask, Father, even right now that you would dip me in the wealth of your eternal knowledge, 
God, let your anointing fall upon this, your servant, yet one more time. God, give me clarity of thought, articulation of speech, but more importantly, God, endow me with your power to teach and to preach. Speak, Lord, for we, your servants, are prepared to hear and listen with our hearts and with our minds that we, God, would be used by you to make a difference in this world, to let them know that you still live and reign and you are God all by yourself. He'll set free, save and deliver. And when it is all said and done, we promise to give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. It's in the master's name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. We pray this prayer in his spirit and power that the church say, Amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands together one more time. We thank God for you now as our praise ensemble comes with a song of praise. Amen. Well, good morning, Ebenezer AME Church. What a fellowship. What a joy divine knowing that we can trust in the Lord, leaning on him with everything that we stand in need of. We serve a God and his word declares he is our refuge and he is our strength. And so we give him praise this day. Come on, come on right where you are. I know you're just getting up. But will you sing with the King Flint? Say this. Come on, sing it. What a joy.
say. I can truly say. I'm in faith. ensemble, our praise team, our, our music ministry, amen, who has led us, amen, in song this evening. We won't be before you too long, but we pray that, amen, the time that God has allowed for us to be together, that uh, something would be said, something would be fe felt that would inspire, bring hope, bring healing, amen, and also bring a change in our lives. Amen. We ask that you would, for a brief moment, Amen. Focus in on a few scriptures here for our time together. I uh, ask that you would travel with me to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations. We want to go to Revelations chapter 3, and I'm going to read it for your hearing, verses 1 through 6. Amen. On my mobile device, I'm going to read the New Living Translation, the NLT translation, but whatever translation you may have, we ask that you would find it. And in your quiet meditative moments, uh, when you're by yourself, we ask that you would spend some time meditating on God's word. Revelations 3, verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to tiptoe over to Ephesians 5, verses 10 through 14. Amen. The word of God reads us thus. Write this letter to the angel of the church of Sardis. This is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. I hold all things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive. But you are dead. Wake up. Somebody say, wake up. Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold on it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, somebody say wake up. I will come to you suddenly as, an unex as unexpected as a thief. Yet ye are some, uh, excuse me, yet there are some in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white for they are worthy. I just went a little bit further 
into uh, 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 chapter 4, verse 4. In verse 5, all who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. Verse 6, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the church. Let us go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Amen. Ephesians 5. We want chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 10. Amen. Verses 10 through 14. This is Paul writing to the church of Ephesus. And Revelations, as we know, is John, who is on the lonely isle of Patmos, writing Revelations. Paul writes to the church of Ephesus, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. For the next few minutes, we ask that you would consider for a Bible study theme, don't sleep on God. It's time to wake up. Don't sleep on God. It's time to wake up. We asked multimedia now if they would show the brief, brief clip uh, that we have staged. Appreciate Amen. multimedia. <laughs>
these. Wake up. Thank you, Baltimore Media. We appreciate you for that. And that quick three minute scene that we just uh, watched with Lawrence Fishburne and Giancarlo Esposito comes from uh, the iconic uh, uh, movie, School Days, who was written and produced by none other than the legend himself, Spike Lee. The movie took place in 1988. I'm an 80s baby, amen, uh, at a time when uh, uh, we as a people, amen, were wrestling with black consciousness, amen, and elevating ourselves uh, as a community and a people while at the same time wrestling with the dilemmas of the world. The, the, the movie, while it takes place in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, on the campus of Morehouse, amen, addresses some of the dynamic issues that as a, uh, uh, as a collective we as people uh, ha are dealing with, not only externally, but internally as a community. We are no longer a, can be considered and never have been considered to be a monolithic people. We, we have uh, to deal with the dynamics and the diversities of life and circumstances uh, uh, as, as it uh, comes to be within our own circle, a amen. We, we are as diverse as the shades of melon in our skin, a a amen. And so we find Spike Lee, amen, who, who in uh, this movie, School Days, at the end of the movie, issues a declaration, a, a, a proclamation, and an alarm. He calls for us through Lawrence Fishburne to wake up, to wake up. There was an article that was penned by uh, uh, Erica Delgado, and she says, wake up in her article, uh, uh, a, 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 a lister from uh, Samuel L. Jackson to Wesley Snipes to Lawrence Fishburne, have uttered the short yet profound message in various Spike Lee films. Fishburne have uttered the short yet profound message throughout the movie. The, the mantra of Wake Up seems to resonate deeply in today's social climate. Lee recently opened up about what the phrase means, offered his take on current affairs, and shared one Thing he predicts could come out of the ongoing protest. MDBS documentary series Through the Lens explores trademark movies making techniques by influential directors uh, such as uh, Spike Lee and uh, all those uh, other directors um, in this season uh, one, episode 10 of the series, which is now streaming. Uh, the title, uh, uh, Spike Lee, Four Decades of Wake Up. In it, Lee broke down his repeated use of the exclamation, wake up, in this film. That cry, wake up, is still relevant, says Lee. He pointed out that those are the last two words of his 1988 film, School Days, and the first words in his 1989, Do the Right Thing. Uh, in every film since, Lee reveals somehow uh, I've had somebody say, wake up. The expression plays a, common, a command, uh, the expression plays a command to the audience urging them to awaken their minds to important social issues that are depicted in Lee's film. What, what does it mean, amen, to, to be woke? 
uh, in this current climate. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me, if I could, add, add a, a definition uh, to that from uh, the African-American vernacular English. Uh, to be woke, <laughs> uh, it, it means to be alert in our current culture to racial prejudice, discrimination. Uh, it's something that we can find in the beginnings right around 2010. It came to encompass a broad awareness of social uh, injustice, social inequalities, uh, to include even sexism, racism, a a man, and, and genderism. And has also been used as a shorthand for some ideas uh, on the American left involving identity politics. Identity politics. Uh, the phrase to stay wake, to stay woke, has history in the American, in the African American vernacular English uh, as far back as the 1930s. In some co contexts, uh, referring to an awareness of the social and political issues affecting African Americans, but people who've been marginalized across this country. A amen. It started in uh, uh, our culture to stay woke, to stay woke. It's, it's, it's important even right now as we are facing amen, a social political climate where there are those who are striving to sit in positions of influence uh, and, and perceive power to develop policies uh, that would further marginalize, amen, not only people of color, not only people in our communities, but those uh, of the least of these, uh, taking away resources and uh, polarizing and dividing us uh, in our humanity to uh, further, amen, bring down and redefine who we are as a people. You, you know who I'm talking about, a amen. All you have to do is turn on, amen, MSNBC, CNN, ABC News, and, and you'll see uh, individuals who are moving through policy and legislation coming up with inhumane policies, a amen, that further separate not only us as a people, but us as human beings, us as a country, talking about uh, they're fighting against wokeness. They're fighting against wokeness, DJ. Uh, I, 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 I would, I would uh, uh, say that uh, uh, they are in the... Uh, the, 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 the ether uh, trying to uh, cause folk to walk and meander uh, 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 in a state of unconscious consciousness, meaning that uh, they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes. And, and while in some places that might work, in some places uh, uh, those uh, 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 promises of sweet nothing, amen, will, will keep us as a people, amen, as a body of believers in the posture of sleepwalking, where, where you have the sense in your mind of being woke while at the same time still asleep. Uh, we can see all throughout history, amen, when when uh, those who uh, were aspiring to positions of power by manipulating, amen, forces and operating with an evil intent wanted the people to fall asleep, wanted the people to fall asleep. Uh, they, they, they wanted to control the narrative uh, by infusing in, into the popular norm of culture, a amen, have truths or lies that, that would literally cause folk to move against their very own best interest. Uh, you, you, I'm, trying to, I'm trying not to take it to a place because, amen, we, we, we are the church, and I, I don't want to position my, my, my pastors to have to answer any questions, amen. 
uh, because the preacher is speaking uh, from a social, political, and spiritual perspective. But, but to fall asleep, amen, to, to ignore what you know your lying eyes have seen or are seeing right before you. Crimes of, hum- of inhumane behavior against all of humanity, but more importantly, us as a community. You know, they're taking, in Florida, uh, uh, black history out of schools. Uh, they, they, they're banning books, amen, that would seek the truth and knowledge, amen. Uh, I believe that there was a philosopher who said, if a man does not know from which he has come, then he positions himself to repeat the same mistakes that were already committed in history. And I don't know about you, uh, but I'm not going back down in history, amen, to suffer anything that our grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents have had to suffer. Amen? Why? Because we need to wake up. This is an urgent call. Amen? To be conscious, to be awakened. Amen? To, To be aware of what's going on. Not only in our social, political climate, Amen. But to be awakened spiritually. Amen. Because how many of you believe that we are still more spirit than man or woman? We have a spiritual awakening that needs to take place. Ah, I'm so glad that Spike Lee helped to set the backdrop for us uh, in in today's Bible study as, as we had seen Lawrence Fishburne running around the campus in school days trying to wake the people up from their social, amen, political, amen, community slumbers because things were happening that would cause us as a people to regress, amen, and to surrender all that God has already positioned us to gain. He's screaming, wake up, wake up. Why? Because while you're here on this college campus, uh, uh, Nelson Mandela was still in South Africa suffering from the uh, political Uh, inhumane policy of apartheid. He had not yet come to the position in the power of the presidency. Amen. And yet in the movie, some of the leadership on the campus were trying to cut a deal with a corporation that had ties into this demonic social injustice in South Africa. So uh, Lawrence Fishburne was, was trying to wake the people up. I would invite you that uh, for my millennials, if you have not watched the movie School Days, that in your, in your quiet meditative moments and times and places and places, and that you would tune in and tune, turn up and, and check School Days out. It addresses uh, where we were as young adults, amen, back in the 80s. But then we find Jesus who is speaking to us. Jesus, who is bringing it to our attention in the book of Revelations. Jesus, who through John the Beloved on the lonely isle of Patmos uh, is speaking to the church in Sardis. He said, I know the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive, for being awoke. But somehow, somewhere, uh, 
you went to sleep. And, and, and in doing so, uh, you, you've allowed the enemy, we've allowed the enemy to come in and to anesthetize us. A amen? Uh, to, to, to drop the ball about our spiritual, amen, uh, uh, power that we were endued with from the resurrection of the cross. You, you know, in Luke Acts, Jesus came and spoke before he ascended to the, the disciples, and, uh, and he said, and, and you shall be endowed with power from on high. Ah, but, but now we, we, we found the church of Sardis who, who had been given a shot of Novocaine and had become numb, amen, not only to the spiritual impact, but the social implications of getting caught up, amen, and not being aware uh, of the needs of God's people in, in all of humanity. He says, wake up and strengthen the things that are already there. And he says this, if you don't strengthen it, I'll come, amen, like a thief in the night, and, and, and I'll take it back, I'll steal it. It, it, it. You know the old saying that, if you don't use it, you have the potential to what? Lose it. And, and how many of you still believe that God has gifted you to impact the world from where you are right now? And I know for some of us, we, we say, well, Rev, I, I, I don't have a big pulpit and a big church to preach from. Uh, for, for, for other of us, we, my bank account, amen, doesn't reflect. That, that I'm, I'm able to make an impact in somebody, somebody's lives. Or, or, or for others, I, 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 don't, I don't come from a family. I don't have the pedigree to go out and, and to do the will in, in the work of God. And while others would say I, 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 I'm not uh, uh, politically connected and have the influence, a, a man that would bring about change. Well, I came to tell you that the devil is a lie, amen, and he has given you a shot amen, of Novocaine to numb you from all that's going on with you and around you. It's time to wake up. Somebody said, wake up, wake up, wake up. You got to wake up. Why? Because they're trying to steal, kill, and destroy everything that God promised us to build up, to rise us up, and to take us over to the promised land. That's right, because where we are uh, as individuals, where we are as a people is not ultimately what God would have us to be here. How many of you still believe that the best is still yet to come? But you got to wake up. You, you, you got you to gotta wake up and get involved. What, what, what does that look like? Amen. You, you, you got to wake up. Amen. Uh, 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 the spirit. Amen. Uh, 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 of, of being a, 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 a revolutionary. Amen. Not to cause a distraction, but to be one that brings about an impending promise that was declared from the beginning of time. What are you saying? What are you saying, preacher? You, you got you to gotta wake up. Amen. Because our children are running amok in the streets. And we're coming to a time and a season where the weather is changing. Amen. Where trees are blooming and flourishing uh, while, while it appears that, that, that our children are experiencing summer madness. Amen. You, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Children dying to gun violence and 
children involved in criminal activity, children not having access to healthy food, children not being aware, amen, of where their parents are and what's going on and if they're going to have dinner, can I pass this class? The pressure of peers pushing me to do things that I know that I shouldn't be doing. Our children need us to wake up, to wake up and get involved. There's no excuse for not waking up and being involved in their lives. And I know some of you say, well, Rev, I ain't got no kids. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, you, you might not have any biological children, but there's some child in your neighborhood, uh, uh, some child that you, you've come across, a, a friend, a mentee, uh, someone that looks up to you as an uncle or auntie, a godmother or godfather that you can, amen, get involved in. Uh, share with them, amen, and speak life into them and uh, encourage them and, and inspire them and to let them know that there was greatness on the inside. And, and, and God wants to unleash it so that it can impact, it can impact and have a difference on everything on the outside, that they have uh, the capability to be any and everything that God has called them to be. Lawyers and doctors and teachers and engineers, a a amen, and uh, dynamic uh, technological influencers, uh, uh, amen. Uh, uh, I, I don't care uh, uh, what the trade or the profession, whatever it is, God has called them to do it, but God has also called them to do it in the spirit of and of excellence and greatness. And sometimes we forget, amen, because we're sleepwalking, amen, uh, obsessed with trying to become something that we're not, chasing uh, after things of this world that uh, we can never fully obtain. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, my, my Bible says that if you keep your mind uh, on the things of God, that he would add everything you need to your life. You ain't got to chase Beyonce to the concert. She going to make some billions. A -a Amen. God bless her real good. Amen. But you ain't got to try to be like her and Jay. You ain't got to try to move a man like, like some personalities out here. No, the, the thing is you got to wake up and become everything that God has called and promised you to be. You, 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 you can't sleepwalk trying to walk in somebody else's shoes. A amen. And to, to those who are in positions of influence and positions of power where they're writing policy that impact the way we move in our culture, uh, somebody needs to shake the devil off and wake up the spirit of service and begin to initiate and speak truth to power. Speak truth to power. Because the decisions that are being made are having an impact on the lives of the least of these. Jesus said, uh, when, when you do this to the least of them, you do it unto me. And, and I can hear some, some, some folk who, who, who might say, well, well Lord, uh, we, we visited the incarcerated. We fed the hungry. And, and you know the scripture, Jesus, it goes on through the litany of things that uh, they testified doing. But what was the intent and purpose behind it? Were you operating in the spirit with the humanity of God? And did you release and bring about resources, not for just one small portion of the population, but for everybody? Did you make a difference? And he says, get from me, you workers and doers of iniquity. We, we, need, we need some of our, our leaders in positions of political influence and power. Amen. Will we send them every four years to wake up and do the right thing. And do the right thing. Because when it's all said and done, and, and we come to that place and space, and we meet our maker, maker face to face, he's not going to ask you how much money was in your bank account and what legacy. He's going to say, did you do the right thing? Were you operating in the power and spirit of 
my father through me. Did you make a difference in the lives of the least of these? Wake up. Wake up. Before the time is at hand. We, we got things we got to do. Paul in Romans, the 13th chapter in verses 11 and 12, simply says in, in that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Paul says you gotta wake up. Because when you wake up, my God, you are clothed in the power, in the spirit and presence of God. You put on and become the light that is already in you. Talk to me, Jesus. Let your light so shine that others might see the testimony of your God operating in the fullness of the kingdom in your life. Talk to me, John. John puts it in the gospel. Ah, he says, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Ah, and the darkness could not comprehend it. That word means that the darkness couldn't seize it, couldn't overtake it, and had no power to even subdue it. When you wake up, you walk in the power of the Almighty. When you wake up, you're able to lay hands on the sick and watch them get well. When you wake up, you're able to transfer blessings and miracles from God to the people of God. When you wake up, you're able to show a tradition to our, to our children that allow them to know that God has not forgot them and that the best is still yet to come. Can I get anybody out there who's ready to wake up? You got to wake up. You got to wake up. Uh, 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 I like the way Lawrence Fishburne, he not only did it and spoke it, amen, with conviction and energy. He was sweating. Amen. Wake up. But I'm a movie buff. Uh, he, he did it also in, in, in the movie The Matrix when he was playing the character Morpheus. He, he said... We don't wake up a mind until the time is ripe and ready. We've come to a time that's ripe and ready to wake up. You got to wake up because when you wake up and you walk in wokeness, you walk in power. When you wake up and you walk in power, you're able to empower others. And that's why the enemy, amen, is coming so hard against being woke. Not only socially, economically, and politically, but more importantly, spiritually. Ah, because if he could keep us asleep, if he could keep us covered in darkness, if he could keep us from walking into the marvelous light, then he can destroy and have his way in and around our lives. It's time to wake up. What are you saying, uh, preacher? Well, uh, 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 the people went to sleep when they tried Jesus. Amen? They, they, they took him in the middle of darkness to a, 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 a kangaroo court. They, they brought him on some trumped up charges while everybody around him had fell asleep during the day. Uh, they mocked him. They beat him. They bruised him. A a amen. They humiliated him publicly. They put a, a, a cross 
uh, on his back and marched him to a hill called Golgotha. There, they, 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 they stretched him wide and they hung him high in the clip of his shoulder. He hung his head and there he died. Ah, the devil said, I didn't put him to sleep. I've knocked him out. I've covered and cloaked him in darkness. Ah, they thought my Jesus was dead. Ah, but how many of you know that the Bible tells us, uh, ah, and is a testimony that early, early Easter Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power in his hands. And that same power that got Jesus about the grave is the same power that's waking us up even right now. The same power that'll make a difference in our families. The same power that'll, that'll snatch our children from the depths in the hands of the enemy. The same power that when your change is strange and your money is funny, amen, will put a download, amen, and transfer more than money in your account of life, amen, that will last from generation to generation. The same power same power that will heal us, but more importantly, set us free. I remember there's a song by Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes uh, that says, wake up everybody. Wake up everybody. Come on, Chris, play that, that song as we close out. A amen. Wake up everybody. Somebody. Come on, Chris. Wake up everybody. No more sleeping in bed. Come on and clap your no hands if you know the song. Thinking, time for thinking thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There's so much hatred, war and poverty. you have to say they're the ones who's coming up and the world is in their hands when you teach the children to jump the very best Melvin in the blue notes, Teddy Prendergrass singing that. Got to wake up. We got work to do. You got to wake up because God wants to use you to make a difference in a dying world. You got to wake up 
You got to wake up. You got to wake up. Why? Because God wants to use you in a mighty, in a miraculous way. If you believe that to be the case, come on and give the Lord another hand clap of praise. We thank God for you. We thank God for you spending time with us. I hope multimedia that I didn't spend too much time, but I know you guys will edit it and make it right accordingly. Amen. We thank God for everyone who took time out of their busy schedule this evening to share and spend some time with us. I hope something was said or read, experienced that would inspire you, encourage you. Amen. That no matter where you are, God is still in charge and he got work for you to do in a great way. The only way to do it is to wake up. And how do you wake up? You wake up with Christ being your Lord and Savior. And so I want to open up the doors of the church virtually. Virtually open up the doors of the church. Rev, I feel like I'm in a slumber and I'm sleeping and I can't seem to shake this thing. Do you know Jesus? Because when you know Jesus, you will wake up spiritually, consciously, and be aware of everything in you and around you. We offer Christ to you this evening. Uh, there should be a message on the screen below that if you are not saved and have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior and have not prayed the prayer of salvation, amen, we want you to go on to ebenezerame.org forward slash, forward slash salvation. Instructions on the screen will lead you, amen, so that someone here at the church, we can reach out to you, pray with you, encourage you, and more importantly, invite you in to the body of believers called Christ. Amen, the body of believers, where we're about the business of staying woke and doing the work of God. Amen, everybody. Come on and put your hands together. We thank God for you this evening. We've come to that point in the service before we give our benediction where we honor God in our worship experience through giving. Amen. We ask, amen, that you would partner with us, that you would join in the ministry of supporting, amen, our outreach, our inreach, amen, as we continue, amen, to touch and make a difference in people's lives of the least of these. On the screen in front of you, you'll see several different ways to give. You can give online. You can go through Tidely, Giveify. You can, amen, mail your, your offering in the old-fashioned way, or you can go on to text to give. However you decide to do it, we want to say thank you in advance for whatever that amount is. There is no small amount too small, no big amount too big, amen, for we all know that, amen, one of us can't do it, but all of us together can conquer some of the challenges that the people of God are going through. Amen. And so we want you to uh, join us in the ministry of giving. Amen. Because in our giving, we find our living, but we also are able to support this ministry. Amen. As we continue to reach out to God's people to provide a better way and a better experience of life, even in some difficult times. Amen. Sisters, I want to just give another quick shout out. Amen. We're coming up to the week of the Women's Conference. I hope that you will go online. Amen. Amen. And register and sign up. Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning, our co-pastor, has put together one of the most dynamic women's conferences in the country. Amen. I guarantee. Amen. If you pause for the cause and amen, put some time, some self-care and build yourself up. God, God is going to bless you through our co-pastor, this mighty woman of God, amen, and all these huge, tremendous speakers and preachers and workshop that she has worked so diligently to put together. Come on out. We'd love to have you there. The brothers are going to be supporting. Brothers, amen, the sisters have asked us to support them. So remember, go online and register your time. They're going to need us to be able to drive golf courts, carts around, Amen. They're going to need our support in making sure sisters get uh, to their cars, to the sanctuary, and back safely to man the office and do whatever we can do to free our women up, our wives and daughters and aunties and moms, to come and get poured into. Amen. So, brothers, please go to the church's website. 
There's a section there that you can click, amen, and sign up for a few moments to come up and volunteer to help with this year's Women's Conference. Amen. I believe that's it. Amen. Come on and put your hands together wherever you might be as we give the benediction now unto him who is able to wake us from any state of sleepness. Not only wake us up, but to bring us into his marvelous light and empower us with his love to make a difference in a dying world. To this God, we give all power, all glory, and dominion. Henceforth, now and forevermore, that the people of God say amen. God bless you. We love you. We hope to see you soon. Amen. Hey, young adults and millennials. Yes, you. It's Young Adult and Millennial Month. It's our time and we're going forward. Come out this Saturday, July 29th and get what you need to move forward at our Young Adult Summit. There will be workshops on mental health, wellness, prayer, and relationships with special guest preachers and speakers, Reverend Shania Dillard, Reverend Kendra Smith, Dr. Hall, and others, and a panel with young adults leaders who are changing the game, including government officials, corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, creators, and more. Registration opens at 9.30, and the summit starts at 10 a.m. Don't miss this powerful experience. Register online at EbenezerAME.org. Then Sunday, July 30th is Young Adult Sunday. Wear your jeans and white or bright summer color as we praise and worship together. For more info on this season, check out Facebook at Ebenezer AME Young Adult Ministry and IG at Eb Young Adults. Email Young Adults at EbenezerAME.org. Young Adults and Millennials, we must press forward in every area of our lives. There is more in store. Let's go forward.